Right? It's God's prerogative. We don't short-circuit God's idea for our life or our plan for our life by taking it on ourselves. I want you to notice this verse in Ephesians 1. It says, having believed, well, having believed what? In Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that he forgave all of our sins, that he has a purpose and plan for our life, and he's going to give us heaven. It says, having believed this, you were marked in him with a seal. Okay, God has given you his stamp. His stamp is on you. The promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. Some people say, can you walk away from God? I would say this, if you're a genuine believer, you cannot walk away from God. You know, we didn't deserve salvation in the first place. We can't secure our salvation in the second place. Only God can do that. And so if you're a genuine believer, your security is sealed. And the mark of that is the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? Amen. Okay. God says no to suicide. Well, I want to give you another one, and that's this. God says no to abortion. The Bible says that God says no to abortion. Psalm 6, 16 and 17, it says this. There are six things which the Lord hates. Does it say there are six things that the Lord doesn't agree with you upon? <laughs> Does it say there are six things that we can debate over? There are six things that we can take our own side against? No, it says this. There are six things which the Lord hates. Yes, seven which are an abomination to him. I want you to notice number three. It says hands that shed innocent blood. Hands that shed innocent blood. God hates that. Okay, well, the question then becomes, is what's inside the mother a baby or not, right? Was, is what's inside the mother a baby or not? That's the big discussion today. Is it a baby? Is it not? Is it a blob of tissue or is it a living uh, creature, uh, creation? I want you to notice this in Psalm 139. I want you to notice this. It says, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. When I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, you saw my unformed body. All the days ordained, ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Now, I want you to do this. Circle all the I's in that verse. And circle all the me's in that verse. And circle all the my's in that verse. Take a look at it. You created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I was made when I was woven. My unformed body, God ordained for me. Well, I want you to notice who he's talking about. He's talking about a baby in its mother's womb. He's talking about himself in a mother's womb. And he says, you created me. You saw me. He even says this, even before I was born, you planned all the days of my life. Amen. Science tells us today that at conception, we already have the potential for full personhood. We already have received that. When mother and father get together, when egg and sperm get together, we cre are created full personhood. Everything that we need is there to make a baby. And God says, is that baby something that's real? Well, yes. I created him. I formed him. I did all this even before you were born. You know, from the human point standpoint, we have a lot of unplanned pregnancies. Isn't that true? There are a lot of unplanned pregnancies. But I want to give you this. From God's standpoint, there are no accidental conceptions. Does that make sense? There might be an unplanned pregnancy, but God says, I allowed that baby to be conceived. And that baby is, is a creation of mine. Even in the result of something evil that could happen, God says, you may not have planned it, but at least I want that baby to be born. Now I want to give you some stats. It's pretty shocking. These are kind of old now, but I want to give them to you anyway. It says 26% of all pregnancies in America now end in abortion. One out, that's one out of four. 30 million Americans have been killed through abortion. That's more than all of the wars put together. Now, I want you to get that. We were making such a, a big deal in the media recently. 
about how 3,000 soldiers have died in Iraq. And that's tragic and that's horrible. But, but in our society today, there have been more babies killed inside the womb than all the wars ever put together. I want you to get that. Did you know that between 400 and 500 aborted babies live after that they are aborted? Did you know that? After they pull the baby out, they're still alive. And they're left to die. God says abortion is killing. And if you don't want to believe me on that, you can take those two verses that I gave you and cut them out of your Bible. I'll give you permission to do that. God says those are human beings. And he says it's wrong to shed innocent blood. Well, there's another argument that says no child should be brought into a world that's unwanted. You know, we don't want this kid. But that's a fa there's a fallacy in that because every conception is a baby that's wanted by God. Amen. We may not want it, but God wants it. God wants that child to be born. Now get this. Here's some good news, guys. I want to give you some good news. Kind of heavy stuff, heavy topic today. But I want to give you this. God forgives unjust anger. 